In the build show today, we're talking steel deck framing. On this deck project we're doing, everything when it comes to the structure on this project is all steel componentry. And you know what? It actually came from one manufacturer. It's like a big erector set. The ledger board, the joists, the screws, the hangers, everything is from Fortress Building Products. We're gonna compare their system to traditional wood, which of course dominates the market in the US. And we're gonna talk about cost, we're gonna talk about the process. This is a really, really interesting system, y'all. Today's build show is sponsored by Fortress Building Products. Let's get going. All right, guys, day two on this project. We started yesterday and the first thing we did was put their ledger board on. This steel piece is from Fortress. And you're gonna notice it has kind of a built-in hanger system and a ledger board right here. So that when we start putting these joists in, we'll show you in a second, these are gonna slide right in. Now, everything on this system is kind of made to mimic what two by traditional framing would look like. But so far, so good. Everything's kind of fitting together easily. The ledger was a little harder for me than a traditional ledger that I've done in the past where I might've had wood framing because I've got slab on grade. So I actually had to, um, uh, to screw into my concrete, took a little bit longer, but what I'm gonna end up with is a nice flush deck to the outside of this house. I don't like step downs. Let me introduce you to AJ from Fortress Building Projects. AJ is the Dallas guy, so you just had to come down to visit me here down in Austin. AJ, you actually helped develop this system Talk to me about how your steel framing is tradition or is different than traditional two by framing. Well, that's the thing is it's not very different at all. And when we were developing it, we really wanted it to look like wood and install like wood. Yep. So you can see with the joist, it's a true two by six. Yep. And it just slides into your ledger brackets. So true two by six, meaning it's actually two inches at the top and it's a true six rather than a five and a half that's down correct. here. And then I also like that you guys are putting a weep hole in there. We poles to the bottom, so if any water or moisture got in there, it's gonna drain out. And then talk to me about the ledger here and the outside uh, Right, board. so you'll notice there's all the same components that you would use with the typical lumber deck. Yeah. Your post, your beams, your ledger, and your joist. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, you're sliding that in, two screws will attach that here, and then there's two types of methods for attaching to your beam or carrying beam. Okay. Today, we're doing a flush beam application, so yep. we're using hangers but you can also cantilever up to four feet with this system. Oh, wow. So we could have just dropped them on top of the beam as well. That's correct. And just cantilevered it off. Talk to me about these two by sixes. How much span can we get? I assume steel is gonna be perfectly dead flat, but how strong is it compared to two bys? Right, so uh, we sell this in a 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Oh my God. With, oh, a, 20, a, with a 20 foot joist, you can actually span up to 16 feet with a four foot cantilever. So you're getting 20 feet of livable area now, if you're depending on your PSF of your deck, that may only require two posts. So it leaves the view open, no unobstructed views for having a post every eight or 10 feet. That's awesome, AJ. Impressive. Let's show these guys how this joist goes yeah. in. And while we're thinking about that, what's the weight on these compared to pressure? Pretty so, similar? Yeah, um, this one, this two by six is actually a little less than a two by eight. Okay. But it'll span up to four to five feet longer than wow. a traditional two by eight. Impressive. Okay, so we've got a ledger on the house and this is gonna kind of slot in, right? And, and then AJ is gonna have to hit it with the mallet on this end, right? Did I get you in there? Let's see. You gonna slide over a little bit. There we go. And then you notice we've got a spacer board that we're gonna put in here in a second. There we go. Can I hold that while you're popping that on? And he's got just a a hanger that pops over the top. And we're gonna get it lined up with this back here. There we go. All right, so that first one's gonna hold it. And we don't need to uh, go into it, but basically there's three screws in each one of those hangers. And with this spacer board right here, this is gonna keep these spaced out all right, AJ, we're framing this 12 inch on center, but we of course could use your system in 16 inch on center. What's the difference? Why would you do one versus Well, that's the right, other? Matt. Our system is preset, as you've seen with the ledger, um, at 16 or 12 inches on center, which saves you time installing the product. Yep. But also 12 inches when you're using um, kind of a synthetic or wood alternative decking, mm -hmm. uh, composite PVCs. You know, you've seen in the Texas heat, it makes those boards get that kind of spaghetti look. <laughs> Nobody when, likes that. When you're using the steel framing, it stays perfectly straight. So uh -huh. you're gonna wanna stay away from that. It also feels much better under feet 
much more solid, so you yeah. don't get that bouncy effect. Makes sense. So just to give you the numbers on this particular project, we figured it was about eight extra joists. And when it was all said and done, we we're talking like seven, eight hundred dollar difference on this pretty good sized deck that we're building here. I forget what our dimensions is, 20 by 24 or something like that. Uh, so we've got a pretty good sized deck. It was worth a couple hundred bucks to make sure we were nice and flat and we didn't have problems. Now, if we were uh, doing e-pay or, you know, two by cedar decking, something like that, we could have easily gone to 16. But remember, you need to know that ahead of time because this ledger board we would have ordered in a different size had we not done 12 inch on center. Man, I'm impressed. This first section where we stopped, I had the guys take a break while we shot this. Probably took us 20 minutes to get here. AJ, let's finish up these joists and then we'll start talking decking. Sounds good. tell you I mean this deck went together super fast like maybe two hours once we had the ledger board and this edge beam set very impressive very easy but here's the deal steel framing I think the big reason to use it look how perfectly dead flat it is but here's the deal it's not just flat today it's gonna be flat tomorrow and next month and next year and that's really a big reason I think if you're a contractor I'm gonna think about wanting to upgrade to steel because I don't want the callbacks. I don't want people saying, hey, my deck boards seem like they're wavy or my deck has changed uh, over six months or a year later. This system's gonna be absolutely rock solid. Now let's talk cost for a minute. The Fortress people are telling me uh, this deck framing compared to traditional framing is about a 25% bump. So there is a cost involved with going with this. However, in the overall deck package, because remember the top deck boards are, are not inexpensive. That's a, that's a big part of the deck package. That's gonna bring that down to maybe a 15% bump in cost. And for that, you're giving your clients a deck frame, all the substructure that in my mind is gonna last at least twice as long, if not longer. And for me as the contractor, the big deal is the callback. And I think the second thing that I didn't expect was the speed. I mean, my guys just absolutely knocked this out. With that being said, let's go meet AJ and let's talk about stairs. It would be a travesty to have this beautiful steel frame deck and then have to switch to wood for my stairs. What do you guys have for me on steel stairs? Well, Matt, you're 100% right. We wanted to put out a complete system, including the stairs, which is typically the most difficult part. So we came up with a really easy system using current product, uh, such as the joist or beam for the stringers, using three separate stair brackets. Okay. These brackets just nest over the current joist. The line on them actually allows you to line and cut to make your stringers. Once you have your first one on, we're just lining Butting these up so the stringers Perfect. go together super quick. Got it. Another thing, we incorporated a tray, mm -hmm. so we don't need as many stringers. Due to the uh, strength of steel, we have these two stringers and we're just laying the trays on. Yeah, so this tray is four foot wide. You also have a three foot tray, right? We have a four foot tray and this is our new adjustable stair tray. Oh, okay. There so it actually go. adjusts from 10 to 11. Um, so your run can change on the pitch and rise of your stairs. That's pretty awesome. Uh, we also attach it using what we call a uh, stair stringer. Mm -hmm. And so this attaches to the beam okay. and then wraps around your stringer and attaches. And then we screw it in the sides. Screw it in the sides, attaches to the bottom of it. Okay. And then we also have our anchor plate. Attaches to the bottom. You can put your anchors in here, your concrete anchors. Concrete. What's nice is it's universal. You can switch to the other side and then your bottom tray will actually hide your nuts and bolts. Got it. I like it, man. Now this, this concrete, just to not be confused here, this is an original patio that we're just leaving underneath the deck uh, as a good under deck base. We're gonna skirt this deck. We're gonna demo out the extra concrete and do our real stairs. I've got kind of a cool design with a long run of stairs here. I've got another wine deck and we've got a fortress railing going on in this project. But AJ, I really appreciate you coming down from Dallas to uh, give me the uh, 411 on your system. For people that are interested in using this framing system, how do people uh, get hooked up with Fortress? How do they understand what it might cost? And are there tech people that can help them like you guys help me on this one? That's a great question. Well, I'd ask them to visit our website. There's uh, dealer locators okay. and contractor locators, and those are preferred contractors. They understand the system. They know how to build with it. So if they're on our website, you know they're going to install it correctly. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and then if you can find a dealer. Call your dealer. They can provide you pricing um, as well as a contractor. They can provide you your quote. 
um, going through that channel, you know you're going to get a quality contractor who's going to do the job right. And if you're like me, a builder who hasn't done it before, they have great support. And like I mentioned earlier, the entire parts kit came from Fortress. We're also using their decking and their railing. We'll get into that in the last half, in the last part of this video. But man, I appreciate you coming down, AJ. Likewise. Good system. With well, that being said, we're going to call it a wrap for today. The guy's got a ton done today. Come back tomorrow. We're going to start on the deck boards and we'll be doing the railing before you know it. We'll see you tomorrow. How about this view, huh? Isn't this awesome? We're calling this the wine deck. Uh, my in-laws have always had a glass of wine uh, before they go to uh, dinner time, you know, like after work, and this is the perfect spot to do that. We also metal frame this. This will end up being kind of a grade level deck. And then this is some fortress railing that we're running on the back as more of a fence line. It's a slightly taller version. The fencing on the side is the Estate Series. But let's check on this main deck right here. The guys did a great job. I really like the Evolution steel framing system. As you saw earlier, dead flat. Uh, and these apex boards with the groove on the side, except a hidden fastener system. I gotta be honest, I didn't love the hidden fastener system that came with Fortress. We made a switch to camo, uh, and boy, these are really nice. This is a system that's intended for steel framing. It says actually metal structure on there. This is their edge metal version. And what you're gonna see here is this clip uh, has the fastener pre-applied. It's got a driller head on there that's intended for metal. There's a name for that, I can't think of it. And then you're gonna slide this clip in and you can see Nathan's just going down the row and screwing it off. They make a clamp system that would apply pressure to the boards. So you could actually line up three, four boards and, and pressurize them so you could get several at a time. They also make a stand-up version, but we've actually found that uh, using the smaller adapter, which is this guy right here, works out real nice. You see it's got some grooves that go in between the boards. You drop your bit in there and it screws it in real nice. Railing system's almost done. We still have steps to go over here, so this project's come along nicely. I did want to mention on these Apex boards, there's two grays and two brown colors. And my guys specifically mentioned, these are very slip resistant. Uh, I think these have some extra slip resistance compared to some other manufacturers in the industry. But if this was poolside, if this was getting wet, I wouldn't have a problem at all walking on this with shoes or bare feet. It, it really has quite a bit of real nice texture on there. And you can see it's an encapsulated board system. So that is the center core, which is a different material than the cap which I assume this cap is some type of PVC. The grain pattern's real nice, and I love this gray color. And of course, all the things for these composite decks, no maintenance, this is gonna be around a long time. I think this actually has a 50 year warranty. Let's let the guys finish up over here and we'll be back soon to check on progress. guys last day of the job we got this big shoe code door from european architectural supply you'll notice we come out nice and flush onto this apex decking this turned out really nice i like this color too they have some kind of uh two-step uh process to pvc cap these composite boards and then they scrape it which leads to some really nice texture and it makes it look less fake less plasticky I also like how the railings turned out. Uh, what are these things called? FE 26 H series cable railing. We just used it on the deck where we needed to, uh, where we were above 30 inches. And then we eliminated over on this side of the deck where we've got just a couple steps down because we've got some grade change going on here. Nathan, my carpenter is finishing up the last couple details. You can see we ended up, instead of using a horizontal skirt because we had so much under deck showing, we ended up using uh, some of the extra boards that I ordered of the apex decking and running those vertically. And we're still working on skirting this backside. Check this out. Johnny on my team uh, is a great welder, but this is not a big welding project. 
he took one of the metal joists, you know, those like two by six looking joists, you can see right here and just tacked it on to the vertical posts on the right and left. And now we've got something solid. Again, no wood, all metal. It's not gonna move on us. And we'll skirt this side as well. And I had a big uh, step down slab. This house had three steps or so out to a concrete patio. All I did was just calf that. I didn't wanna spend the money to rip that out. So this deck, because it's flush, we left it under there. It was kind of a weird shape, huge block of concrete. It'll be fine under there. So deck projects basically done. We got one last day. While we're here though, let me show you a couple other cool things. We did a fence project while we were here. My team did this. And this fencing is also from the guys at Fortress. And this is called the Estate Series Fencing with the Oasis Boards. This is kind of a cool system. Set your posts. These panels come straight from these guys and they've got some uh, really special and particularly cool coatings with a nice 10 year warranty going on here. And then you can infill these with standard cedar boards if you want, um, which is a really nice look. They've got that on their website, but these Oasis boards are cool. They come pre-punched, pre-drilled, and you notice uh, in the center here, there's a regular hole. Top and bottom, there's an oblong hole, so you can account for a little bit expansion and contraction. Uh, because they're a composite board and we're in the Texas heat, they're not perfectly straight. Uh, if you sight down it, you might see just a little bit of movement on those boards. But when you look at the fence panel, like this one across the way here, all the way on the other side of the yard, as you look at it straight on, they look perfect. And I like the composite boards because now this fence is not going to need to be replaced in 15 or 20 years. And really the only thing that'll need to happen is maybe a power washing occasionally. There's no staining. There's really no maintenance other than an occasional power wash, depending on whether sprinklers are hitting it or if moss grows on the north side, that sort of thing. But it looks really, really good. And this is the same uh, H-Series cable rail, like I mentioned. We use that on the back of the property here. That's actually our, uh, uh, basically our back property line here. And we've got this quarry lake beyond. So it's really allowing us to see the lake view. And this deck turned out great, I thought. This is our ground level deck. We're calling it our wine deck. Uh, this house, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, is my in-law's house. Uh, unfortunately, my mother-in-law passed away before she was able to move in the house. A uh, huge disappointment for my wife and I because we're just a few blocks from our current house. Uh, and my mother and father-in-law married over 50 years would always have a glass of wine on their back deck. So we're calling this the wine deck and uh, we'll be praying for Mimi and thinking about her every time we, we have a glass of wine on this back deck. But isn't this wonderful to have this on the back of the property? I've never done this kind of back deck, front deck before. I really like how it turned out. Super nice project. Fortress is easy to work with. Pretty much everything you see here came from them, from the framing to the decking, the fence, the whole shebang. Uh, so I'll put a link in the description for those guys. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. I really like how this turned out. If you're interested in working with them, check out that link. And guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button. You know, we've, not, we've got new videos here every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, if you don't know, over on thebuildshow.com or buildshownetwork.com, it feeds to the same website, that's my website that's basically Netflix for builders or YouTube for builders. I have 10, gosh, actually 11 new videos now with my new contributor, Brian Euler, uh, up in the Pacific Northwest, shooting videos at their job sites and Steve Basic, an architect, shooting at his uh, architectural desk. So if you wanna learn more about construction in general, building high performance houses, designing high performance houses, this is the website for you guys. In the link in the description below, I'll have a uh, email address, or pardon me, if you enter your email address rather on that link, I'm gonna send you an email every Tuesday and every Friday with what's new on the site. That's your way to kind of figure out what I wanna watch and what I'm interested in. So anyways, guys, really appreciate your support. Uh, you know, as we come up the at the end of this year, really close to a million subscribers on this YouTube channel. I've been doing this since 2008. It would be really fun. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you on the build crew. All right, guys, follow me on Instagram or TikTok. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.